Okie dokie. Well, we'll get started if everyone's ready. Um, so we are going to be talking about a project, um, a project for the Football Association uh, that we, Kineo, City and, Gile uh, City and Guild Kineo, developed for the Football Association. Um, it's kind of somewhat of a case study, really, looking at what the requirements were from the FA and looking how we kind of scoped out the requirements and then kind of went from there, really. So it's, it's somewhat of a case study, and I hope, I hope you find it useful. Um, I'll just click through a little bit more. So in terms of the agenda, it's a presentation somewhat in two parts. So to begin with, my uh, colleague Darren Sandbach, who works, well, do you want to introduce yourself? So, uh, my name's Darren Sambach, I'm the Digital Learning Manager at the Football Association, so responsible for all the front and back end systems that we use to manage qualifications, the delivery of it through 52 different franchises and everything that we do centrally as well. Yeah, brilliant, thank you. So the first part of the presentation is really Darren talking about that, that, the background to the project, and the second part is me talking more about the solution. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Lewis John. I'm a solutions consultant for City and Guilds Kineo. Uh, my role at City and Guilds is to scope out new projects, um, to work with the team, the platforms team, um, and then to put a proposal together. And then as the project moves forward, I become the account manager for the project. So I'm going to be talking, as I say, a little bit more about the solution side of things. The next slide is just the introductions piece, which we've pretty much done. Uh, I'll just mention Kineo. We've got a stand at the show here. So if you want to know more about Kineo or about the Tatara platform, you can find out more on our stand, which is just over that away. So I'm going to hand over now to Darren to cover off the first part, which is really the requirements piece and the background to the project before I pick up on the solution side. So over to you. Thanks, Lewis. Um, have we got any qualified coaches or referees or anything? No? Okay, that's good, because then you've not experienced our terrible systems. <laughs> um, so uh, a big driver um, in terms of who we are, FA Learning, we're the edu educational arm of the FA. Um, we're responsible for the delivery of qualifications and CPD um, hours and development uh, across the seven different disciplines up there that I'm not going to read out to you. <laughs> so we've got quite a wide remit across football uh, and quite a lot of uh, learners and everything who come through. And I'll come on to those challenges around volume, uh, particularly uh, the, the kind of socio-demographic mixture that we deal with, which is right across uh, the whole mix of, uh, of England. Um, we're based at St George's Park, which is the National Football Centre. Um, it's a £100 million worth of buildings. Uh, it's a single location right in the middle of the country that not everybody can get to, and it costs quite a lot to come there and do some of the elite level qualifications. So one of our core challenges with any kind of online or blended learning program is how can we get um, the, the sensibilities and the ethos of St George's Park and take that out to uh, grassroots football development in particular, the initiatives that are run by uh, 52 county FAs uh, locally who are wholly responsible for uh, delivering the different qualifications uh, there. And this is the reality of coach education at the moment. We have a, a small number of very traditional e-learning modules um, which are very much read and click and going through and some kind of uh, summative assessment at the end. They're not particularly engaging. They take people between 30 minutes and five hours to do one, so there's no kind of consistency there. And they're, they're, although some of them are mandatory around safeguarding children and emergency aid, equality and diversity, uh, some of the other ones which are more kind of CPD driven uh, perhaps see a lot less usage. So it suggests people aren't engaging except for the places where they have to. This is at one of our conferences at St George's Park, so uh, what you can't see are the other 300 coaches who are all stood around the pitch desperately trying to hear what Roy's saying to the players in the middle so they can apply that to their coaching in their context and taking it away. We've solved some of that through technology, ref link, earpieces and different things within that kind of environment, so getting away from PA speakers like this where there's lots of noise in the background, um, but there's more we can do when people aren't on site for that event. This is the current online, well, almost current. Uh, four, four weeks ago, we launched the new LMS, so it's not quite current, but for a lot of our courses, it's, it's uh, uh, I think, uh, a, a pretty overwhelming, overlong enrollment process to get on an online course that takes you across two different systems, hits pop-up blockers, and has a whole load of pain and misery in there as well. Uh, and it's one of the core problems is how do we solve that? We couldn't do it on existing platforms, which were 
fairly old web systems that we wanted to retire anyway. Um, but we really did need to move on from this and, uh, and simplify it uh, in terms of that user experience and that user journey. So it's not about the content that's at the end, that's another set of challenges. How do we make the platform where we're hosting the blended learning, getting people enrolled on face-to-face -face courses and taking them through that, working in a much better way? Which really ties into our challenge. Um, our key problem is volume, uh, to be quite honest. I know there are some uh, big kind of education uh, organizations here and in terms of suppliers as well. Um, we have a team of 40 people in FA Learning who are responsible for the uh, arrangement of all face-to-face -face courses at the elite level, supporting all learners, uh, coaches, referees and the different disciplines through their learning journey. We're very much about the lifelong um, learning journey as well in terms of our ethos. So it's not about getting them into a course and then getting them boshed out with a certificate at the end. We have initiatives like the Licensed Coaches Club where we want them to do three to five hours of CPD every single year. Um, we hit on average around 100,000 learners a year coming through our, our, our kind of processes and our educational programs. Uh, half of those are new. So half of them have never experienced education with the FA before. They've not been through the like the trials and tribulations of using some of our systems so we're having to educate them and get them up to speed on kind of the legacy stuff all the time and that's quite an overhead that's quite a difficult process to do when really i'd rather be delivering really engaging content to them on platforms that are easy to use and simple for them to understand cpd in particular is an issue um, with 32,000 members uh, on the licensed coaches club we needed to deliver around 150,000 hours of cpd uh, minimum just to service the requirements we were setting out for them to be a member of our scheme um, so online kind of more informal cpd taking videos of roy hodgson or other coaches delivering at those conferences cutting them up really easily and simply getting that online and letting people just look at it and then tell us what they were going to change about their coaching practices is a really simple way to develop uh, coaches to support them through whatever it is they want to do uh, and to enable them to continue learning without it being over onerous but we didn't have a platform to do that on. Um, we also had and still have a whole series of uh, legacy systems um, which are very old very unsupported and very painful to use so we need to migrate away from those onto the new processes, the new platforms as soon as we can. Uh, uh, otherwise we can't improve as a business. Uh, never mind do the content, we can't deliver it more efficiently uh, and with a better user experience at the end. So whole series of challenges there. Um, our needs broadly. Um, we want to move towards a full blended learning program. It's interesting walking around and, uh, and being upstairs at the conference. Um, if, if we're going from effectively the basis of having nothing other than 10 archaic online courses, we've only moved along the scale towards having the foundation stone of having a learning management system. We've still got all the e-portfolio, the full blended learning, rewriting all of our qualifications, uh, re-educating all of our deliverers. We've got 2,000 tutors delivering to the game uh, and supporting that whole process of change and cultural shift in terms of how we teach, how we educate and how we develop. Um, and as I said, we need to support 50 odd other organizations in the use of these systems as well. But it all had to be cost effective. We've all got the problem. We might be the football association, but we're a not-for-profit. So um, we're not rolling in money in terms of the educational arm of it. We haven't got loads of cash to invest in this when we've got other more large scale CRM systems that we need to develop across the whole game. Um, so we really needed to prioritize. It's interesting, one interesting point I will make here um, as we go on to YCNG Kineo, um, the whole business case for putting this LMS in place stacked up because we decided to move a couple of our, uh, couple of our qualifications uh, from us printing certificates and posting them out to being digital downloadable certificates only uh, mm -hmm. from a client perspective. And that brought the payback period for the whole system down to about two or three years, uh, which in any kind of sense, stop putting business improvement, process improvement on there as well. Mm -hmm. It just stacked up and it really kind of made sense what we wanted to do. Um, broadly, uh, I'll touch on this, I'm conscious of time and I'm sure Lewis has got plenty to get through. Um, we went with CNG, Kineo and Totara for a couple of different reasons. Uh, Totara as a system was broadly capable and met our requirements straight out of the box. We required uh, two or three kind of key customizations. 
Um, we wanted single sign-off. We didn't want people signing in two or three times into two or three different FA systems. Sign in once and then as you move around it remembers who you are. Uh, we needed CRM integration, so the LMS is great for education, but we've got a whole game system, so we understand if you're a coach and you're learning with us, you're also a player on Sunday afternoon and you've just been given a red card. And you might also be a referee, and you also might be a club uh, official managing uh, a local grassroots team. So we've got a whole load of different contexts we need to understand you in and what you're doing. And we also need to sort out payments. Our education is commercial. We charge uh, at every level of the game throughout for people to come and enrol in it, to complete that learning, and then to go on, whether it's CPD or full formal courses. Those charges range from £100 down at kind of county FA level up to around £7,500 at UEFA Pro Licence level. So we needed some decent payment systems in there to uh, look after that as well. Um, Given the number of learners, given the number of courses, given the number of organisations we needed to support, um, and given the, the financial transactions that are going to come through it, uh, we didn't really want to bring this in-house, recruit a load of Moodle experts or LMS experts and start developing it ourselves. We wanted that enterprise level support from a business who could look after us. Um, and jumping on a little bit, um, we've worked with uh, Kineo before they were CNG Kineo for a while. We get on well with them as a team. They work really effectively with us across a whole range of projects. So felt comfortable from that perspective. Um, and to be quite blunt, the CNG umbrella, when they mer uh, merged with uh, City and Guilds, that really solved a lot of the internal stakeholder challenges that we were having around different bits. That really enabled us to go back to our senior directors and say, City and Guilds, we're going to be all right. You know, hmm. These guys aren't going to go anywhere and nothing's going to change. They're going to be really capable. Um, so that takes a lot of boxes as well. And ultimately the cost was right. It, it's nice having all those other things, but it does tend to come down to the pound sign uh, in the end. And that was right as well with that business case and everything taken into account. So that was our rationale. I'll hand over Lewis, uh, mm. to Lewis to let him tell you what he did for us. Thank you very much, Darren. That's uh, very good. So um, before diving into the solution, I'm just going to talk for a little bit about Kineo, just in case you don't know us. I won't spend too long, but I'll just go through a couple of slides. Um, so, City and Guilds Kineo, um, we were acquired by City and Guilds a couple of years ago following a pilot program that we did for them using the Tatara platform. It was a very, very successful project, everyone was super happy with it, so much so that uh, they approached the directors and wanted to buy the company. So it's a bit like the old Remington ad, they, they liked us so much they wanted to buy us. Um, it was a really good match. Uh, we, we're passionate about learning, City and Guilds are passionate about learning, so it was a kind of match made in heaven, really. So since that time, since a couple of years, we've been part of the City and Guilds group. Um, by the by, City and Guilds also own the Institute of Leadership and Management, and that's interesting for us because they've got a lot of great content, so there's a bit of a flow of content through to the Kineo side of things as well. So in terms of the bottom bubble there, Tatara, um, we, Kineo, were co-founders of the Tatara platform. Um, and we developed that going back 2010 and launched it in 2011. We got together with a couple of other organizations to kind of get the right funding model to, to, to develop the platform. I'm also going to talk a little, bit about, a little bit about Tatara, just in case there's anybody that doesn't really know about the platform. Most of the rest of what I talk about is going to be the solution, but I'm going to start off talking a little bit about the, uh, the platform as well, as I say, just in case you don't know. So something else to say about Kineo, we're, we're one of the biggest agencies in the UK. Uh, we're learning provider of the year 2014 and a bunch of other accolades of which we're very proud. We're one of the biggest, biggest agencies in terms of Totra as well. We're one of the biggest agencies implementing Totra solutions globally, not just in the UK. So we've got lots of great awards. We provide a range of services. Again, I won't dwell on this too long, but we, will, we build e-learning. We build e-learning platforms. We've got hosting and support. We're doing a lot of work about fully responsive design. We've got an ADAPT framework, which is a fully responsive e-learning framework. And we built some e-learning for the FA for the uh, safeguarding children, which in itself is a fascinating project that we could do a whole session on. We've got a bunch of other services. On the city and guild sides, we've got apprenticeships, qualifications, and accreditations, and such like. Uh, but as I say, I won't really dwell on that too much. So Tatara, it's, uh, it, it's an enterprise distribution of, uh, of Moodle. 
uh, commercial distribution. So it, it, it has all the functionality that Moodle has, uh, but with a whole layer on top that's focused on business. Moodle is the most widely used LMS in the world. It came out of academia. It's used by a lot of universities and colleges, and it's a fantastic virtual learning environment. But it's designed and developed for that academic environment. So what we did with Tatara was we expanded it out and added a whole layer on top to make it work for business. Um, so a lot of the functionality that was added was around integrating with other systems like HR systems, pulling in users, organization hierarchies, mapping users to the organization hierarchy so that the learning could be automatically delivered to the learner. So it's all about the admin and the reporting really. A um, bunch of other functionality there. I won't go through every, every element. Um, there's also performance management and appraisal management, which is one of the more recent features. Um, and there's, you know, and there's, there's lots more I could say just about the Tatara product. If you, if you want to know more about it, come see us at, at the Kineo stand. So on to the main thrust of what I'm here to talk about. Um, as Darren mentioned, uh, effectively for the FA, we've got a core standard Todora, but we've got three key customizations that we laid over the top of that. Um, well, I say customization. Single sign-on is more of a configuration, but associated with that, we did a customization to draw through the header and footer from the main website, the main FA website. So if it changes on the FA website, then it automatically changes on the learning platform. We also did a CRM integration, and that's about pulling in learner records and pushing out learner completions back to the CRM. And the third key sort of element of the solution was the e-commerce for which we developed a bespoke plugin um, based on Bartley Smart Pay, which the FA were all, all already using. Kind of one of the, the, the kind of themes, I guess, for what I'm talking about here is that last sentence there, or second to last sentence, which is about staying as close to core as possible. Um, of course. Being open source, Tatara is very customizable. So moving away from the configuration side in terms of the look and feel, one can extend it and expand it based on specific customer needs. Uh, and you know, that allowed us to develop the, 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 kind of, uh, the, the payment plugins. But, but what I'm getting at is that the approach we took was very much based on a plugin approach. So where, where a, re a requirement, where there was a requirement for customization, we would try wherever possible not to change core code and we would develop it as a plugin. That makes it very maintainable over time. And this is something if you guys are looking to buy a learning platform, you definitely want to bear this in mind. Stay as close to core as possible and work with an agency that's going to apply a kind of plugin type approach to the solution. Because then the total cost of ownership over years and years and years is going to be much lower than if you have a highly bespoke system where core code changes have happened. Sometimes you need to do that, and that's a fact of life, and it's fair enough. But you kind of you know that going in, as it were. Um, another bullet point I'll mention here, and I'll talk a bit more about later, is that there were a hell of a lot of user records that we needed to pull in. And as I say, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. So here's a kind of diagrammatic overview of the solution. We've got the LMS at the core. We've got the FA website, because if a user wants to create an account in the LMS, they actually register or sign up on the main FA website in order to access the LMS. So that's where the single sign-in happens. Anything to do with user registration and user login is done via the, the FA website. That then single signs them, single sign-ons them into the LMS where they can access the learning and such like. As I say, I'll talk more about how we got the data in and how we push it back in a minute. But the main thing to be aware, bottom left there, you've got the FA CRM system. So there's a backlog of data about coaches, referees, and such like that we needed to pull into the system to know more about what the users should be able to access and what levels of courses and, and qualifications they're able to access. Over on the right, we've got the smart pay integration as well. So I'll talk a little bit more about each of those areas now, and, and, and hopefully you'll find it useful. So on, in terms of the user journey for the single sign-on, I just touched on this a minute ago. The user logs into the FACOM.website, they click through to the learning, and then they're automatically lo logged into the LMS. Um, one other element here for single sign-on, even though we've already imported user records from the CRM, so anybody that's ever done a coaching qualification and such like, we've drawn that through. Sometimes the user may have updated their record since we last did that data import because that happens on a kind of a daily basis. So then we might need to just look at, is the data up to date? So we do this thing called data mapping to take the information from the, uh, from, from the sign in and, and, and update the user profile into Tara where we need to. All of which to say it creates, a, well hopefully creates a seamless journey. 
This is a kind of process flow for the single sign-on. I won't go through every step because it will be a little bit dull. But the point is that these are the kind of things you map out when you're doing an integration, when you're doing any kind of customization. You need to go to a really low level of detail in order to make sure that all your flows are going to work before you start building it. This is what I was talking about in terms of the header and footer. So over on the left, we've got the FA website. And over on the white, right, we've got the LMS. So you can see, we can see the footer on the LMS side, but we can see the header on both. But it, it basically creates a consistent user experience, a seamless user experience. That's the idea behind it. In terms of the CRM, and I've sort of touched on this a little bit, um, the FA has got a CRM. Um, in place, tracking all the coaching qualifications and such like that have taken place at a national level or a county level. Um, and in many cases, courses have prerequisites. You can't do a level two until you've done a level one. So of course, we needed to pull all that data in, those 575,000 data records and 275,000 user records, in order to make sure that we knew on the system level, on the LMS level, what people had done historically in order to make available make available to them the right courses for them. And we do that via the recognition of prior learning, which is a standardized method of pulling through user, user records and updating course completions and the like where they've happened outside the system. If a user does a course on the system, of course, we know about it and we capture it. But if they've done it outside of the system, we need a mechanism to pull that data in. So that's where RPL is used. Totoro has the facility to create a kind of a learning pathway uh, with a daisy chain series of courses where you need to do a course before you can do the next course. You need to do level one before you do level two. So we're using the Totara's program functionality in order to do that, to manage that kind of uh, uh, sequencing, if you like, of, of learning. And we're also using what are called audiences uh, within Totara, which is a way of dynamically assigning groups of users based on any data in the system, whether it be course completions, whether it be where they live, whether it be a custom profile field and the like. And that means we can manage who sees what. So we can start selectively displaying courses to users. You can see a course if you belong to an audience. You can't see it if you don't. So that allows you to sort of have that ability to hide and show courses based on audiences plus run reports and the like about those audiences. In terms of the e-commerce side, moving on, um, I mentioned this earlier. We took a plug-in approach. So every element of the payment process that we implemented was based around creating these plugins. So we've got a payment enrollment plugin. So where you've got a list of courses and those courses have a payment associated with it, we create a, an enrollment plugin which basically allows you to access that course material if you go out and pay for it via the Barclays Smart Pay system. Once you've paid for it and the transaction has been validated and successfully completed, you'll then return to Totara and you have access to all the course material. That's the way you get enrolled. It's via that payment process. The FA also have promotional codes, discount codes and the like. So we also needed to apply that. that. Some people, when they're paying for a course, they get a discount. So they get 10% off, 20% off of the like. Also, that discount, that promotional code, isn't necessarily the same for everyone. It might depend on what you've done previously. It might depend on another, you know, a number of different rules. So we've got a promotional code plug-in. Then we've got the gateway plug-in, which actually does the conversation between our system, the LMS, and the Bartley's uh, smart pay system. And then we've got a bunch of reports, which is how many people are using discount codes, how many people have purchased courses, and the like. So this is all implemented. And there's a whole bunch of documentation around this, down to a really fine degree of detail about the way, the way this is going to be implemented. Again, we've got the user flow where you're tracking through, uh, you're selecting a ses session. As soon as you go to pay for it, we reserve a place for you because these courses have capacity. They might only have 50 places. They might have 100 places and such like. But as soon as you go to buy it, we need to reserve a place for you until the payment process is completed. Once it's completed, that place is awarded to you. If you kind of just cancel out halfway through, then after a period of time, I think it's about 20 minutes, that space becomes available again. So these are all the kind of thought processes one needs to go through through that transaction process. And ultimately, the, the user gets access to the material. So again, it's just another example of where we're kind of working through the flow and which systems are being used. So we're starting off, we're using the FA website, the orange blocks there. Then we're moving in through to the LMS and the green blocks. Then we're spinning out to the payment system, which is in blue. So just thinking about that journey, that information journey about how you're linking the different systems together. 
And I touched on this earlier, we had a massive data import. Um, now, the actual target audience for this project in this phase is around 30,000 um, coaches primarily. There's going to be some referees in there as well. But we had to import everyone who'd ever done anything. So despite the fact we've only got 30,000 users expected, we actually needed to import 275,000 user records and 500,000 historical completions. That's a lot of data to process. So we had to do some work internally to optimize that. We had a dedicated server with a multi-core processor. We multi-threaded the import process so that we could feed different cores or different elements of the core processing different pieces of data just to get it to do it, to achieve it in a manageable amount of time, hours, not weeks kind of thing. So it was a hell of a lot of data to import, but we got it in and it's working. And uh, as Darren mentioned at the beginning, we launched about a month ago um, and we've got some more work coming in the pipeline. This is a solution that's going to grow from here. Uh, uh, and it really kind of underlines the fact that Tatara, Tatara works in an enterprise environment when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of users and hundreds of thousands of user records. So it's just a couple of screenshots here. It's just sort of showing the user journey from landing on the home page to clicking through to the course catalog, which in this case is called Find Awards seeing a list of the courses themselves, clicking through, and then accessing the actual course material. And in this case, on the right, we're seeing a face-to-face -face event with the ability to sign up to that face-to-face -face event. So it was, it was a wonderful project to work on. We get on so well with the FA team. Uh, absolute pleasure to work with. Um, and in terms of what made the project success, made the project a success, was that close working relationship um, so despite the fact that the guys are based up in Burton-on-Trent and we're based down in Brighton, at kind of opposite end of the countries, um, we had a lot of face-to-face -face meetings because it's, it's, you know, it's good to do that when you're working on a project to get together in a room and workshop it out, plus using other you know, phone calls and the like. Very detailed scoping specification and thorough documentation. That documentation piece is so important. When, you, when, you, when you're doing the project, the documentation, documentation doesn't seem terribly important because you all know what you're doing. But then a year later, a year down the line, going back and referring back to that documentation is absolutely key. So whichever agency you work with, whether it's Kinney or whether it's another partner, Tatara partner, really make sure you're getting that high level of documentation, something that's uh, you know, to a high level of, of detail. Moscow, we've probably all heard of Moscow. It's a kind of prioritization approach. The must-haves, the should-haves, the could-haves, and the won't-haves. So we needed to deliver this thing. We needed to deliver it to budget and to schedule. So we went through working with the FA, that Moscow process, saying, what have you got to have? And clearly, there were three absolutely must-haves, which was the, the CRM the integration, uh, the payment, pay, payment gateway, and the single sign-on. But there's a bunch of other things in the pipeline, and they'll be coming later. They're the should-haves and the could-haves. And the won't-haves are the things that, well, whilst you could do them, they're prohibitively expensive. So maybe there's a better way of doing them, not inside the system, unless money's no object, which it almost certainly is. Plug-in approach to development. You know, I'll kind of keep emphasizing this. It's so important that the, the customizations are developed in a maintainable way. And so work with a partner that's got that philosophy. That would be my tip. But um, Tatara as a solution, it has this facility to develop customi customizations via plugins without kind of monkeying with the, with the core codes. Um, last point there is most of the complexity is under the hood. So anybody here can go to the FA site, can create an account. Um, and access the LMS. We're just doing that last little piece, the kind of exposing the LMS within the FA site, but it will be happening very, very soon. So you can actually do this and see this yourself. It looks really simple. It doesn't look like a sort of customized solution because most of the customizations are under the hood. They're invisible to the user. The user experience, the user journey is a very you know, intuitive and simple one. The complexity is invisible to, invisible to them. It's under the hood. So I think that's time-wise, we're probably about right, about done. So I don't know if anyone has any questions. I open the floor to questions. So you're just asking what the kind of timelines were. Um, well, the, from start to end, I think we were looking at around six months, was it? Was it a little bit longer? Yeah, we had, um, I think we kicked off the project properly around February, March, mm. um, uh, probably March time, and then we delivered in uh, December. Uh, I think our initial timelines were a little bit more ambitious than that. Um, the, 
I think we probably had two to three months worth of slippage in there uh, mm -hmm. as a result of really the challenges that Lewis has alluded to around the data import and figuring out what we're doing there. Yeah. Um, it's taken us probably 18 months, two years to build the business case and actually get the project kicked off though. And it's worth mentioning as well that we work really closely with the IT team at the FA as well. So some of the web services that we're using were actually developed internally at the FA and then we're effectively leveraging those web services. Um, and so that, and that, that in itself was a, was a very collaborative and successful kind of relationship. Okay, well I hope you found it useful. I mean it's a sort of deep dive, but thank you. <laughs>